Please bow your heads and open your hearts and join me in prayer. Precious Lord, we thank you for giving us another day, for waking us up this morning. We thank you for bringing us through another week and another month. You have poured so many blessings on us, and we thank you for all of them, from the biggest to the smallest. We thank you for this opportunity to gather to praise and worship you. We lift up in prayer those who are living on the streets. We pray they find a warm place to stay. Send your angels down to protect them. We lift up Kevin Ward's family. Surround them with love and compassion. Give them strength to get through each day and let them find comfort in your arms every night. We pray for all who struggle with mental health issues. Let us remember that we need each other and we need you. Let us leave this worship service today better than we came in. Let each person be blessed by a word, a song, a smile, a hug. This is our prayer in the powerful, mighty, loving, compassionate name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Mm. We woke up this morning. God woke us up. And we are here. We just thank him. I am saying this from the bottom of my head. And I know you all feel the same. And now, you are all welcome, everybody here. You are welcome to the house of the Lord of our pastor, our senior pastor, Pastor Evan Wallace, and our contracting pastor, Pastor Stewart, we welcome you all to the house of the Lord. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? It may be cold outside, but our hearts are warm because we know somebody loves us and we know God loves us. He woke us up this morning. He brought us up this morning. We just praise his name. And now I'll say it once again on behalf of all of us, all the regular members and all and our pastors, Pastor Wallace and Pastor Stewart, we welcome you all to the house of the Lord. And now, if we have any first time worshiper, I don't, nobody said, this is God's house and we are all God's children, so it's not about visitors. If you are worshiping with us for the first time, can you please stand up so that we can acknowledge you? I'm not going to give you this microphone or anyone to say anything. We're just going to acknowledge your presence. Is there any first time worshippers with us this morning? Okay, so today, I mean this morning, this Sunday, we are all family. So, let's just praise God and do his will. Amen? Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning, uh, we have guests among us this morning. Um, they've been here for a while and went away and they're back visiting us. And we'll probably be seeing them some more, more often. Years ago, a student from Wesley started the Caribbean Alliance Group, which I now chair. He went back to Jamaica to be a pastor, and he's here visiting and worshiping with us. My friend Michael Graham and his wife are here. You just like to stand so we can recognize you. Okay. 
Thanks for being with us. And for all who know the Things Without the Caribbean Alliance, this was the person who, this was the visionary behind that group. Okay. <laughs> This morning lesson will be is taken from the book of Isaiah chapter 6 and I'll be reading verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings, with two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called 
and the house filled with smoke. And I said, woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the serfs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongues. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, Lord, send me. Good morning, church. Good morning. Please stand as you're able for the reading of the gospel. Once while Jesus was standing be beside the lake, just center it, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let your nets down for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing, yet, if you say so, I will let the nets down. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Good morning, church. Good morning. Church, I didn't hear you. Good morning, church. Good morning. Amen. God woke you up this morning, set you on your way. It is right for you to give God thanks and praise. Yes. It's offering time, my friend, a time when you give back to God a portion of what he had given you through the week. It's time when you dig deep into your purse and give to God. A pastor once told me you need to give until it hurts. So it's giving time. Let us pray. What shall I render unto you, O God? You got everything. Everything comes from you. Father God, but we are here grateful and thankful to you for this opportunity to come and say thank you, Lord, for grace and for mercy. And we bring back to you, Lord, a portion of what you have given to us for the furtherance of your work here on earth. Lord God, we pray that you bless it 30, 60, and 100 fold. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen.
May God bless both the gift and the giver, that it might be used as our form of worship to be this day. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
Amen. Some, someone help me for a bit, please. I just want you to take time out and bless the Lord. You don't mind, do you? If you want to stand and clap your hands, you can do it. If you just want to be silent, you can do it. But somebody ought to help me in blessing the Lord. Because indeed, he has been faithful to us. Indeed, he has been King of kings and Lord of lords. Indeed, God has been holy. As he said in his temple, let heaven adore, adore him, heaven and earth adore him this day because he's Lord. Not just Lord of some people, for he's Lord of your life and my life. Amen? And so we give him honor, we give him praise. We thank him for where he has brought us from and where we are right now. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Amazing and gracious God, we give you thanks and praise just for claiming a wretch like me. Make it personal today. Amazing and awesome God, we thank you for rescuing us when we could not even put our hands out. When we couldn't even call your name, you heard us and you rescued us. When it hurts so bad and so deep down inside that all we could say was, Lord Jesus, Lord, you send your angels to be with us. And when it got so bad that the angels were just standing there. You came along and you opened your arms and you wrapped them around us so could we could feel the comfort of a delighted God who claim us as his own. And so today we honor you. We bow before you in this worship service. We give you everything that is in us. When you ask, who shall I send? Even though it was cold this morning, even though the temperature was in the teens, we said, here I am, Lord. Send me. And so here we are, ready to go about doing what you need us to do, ready to take up the cross, ready to get delighted in your words. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Over the last couple of weeks, I've learned so much. You know when you think you know stuff? You don't know nothing. Amen. When I thought I had everything conquered, Thursday morning, there's a little young man that needed to talk to someone. And I went and got him and brought him into the office. All I could say was, Lord, I thank you for showing up there. Because your grace, it was your grace. I know that has been covering that young man and is still covering him. My church, we don't know who's watching us this morning, but I found out last week that a lot of the, good morning Heights, a lot of city employees <laughs> look at us every Sunday. <laughs> they even heard us ask for volunteers <laughs> and said, oh, the church is asking for volunteers. We got a volunteer. Amen. We never know what God is up to. So we give him praise this morning. 
You heard the scripture read from Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 through 8. You and I both know the song that we love, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. Let's save a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, been blind, but now I can see. The song is God's grace, and it truly is amazing. And when we talk or when we think about grace, we often think of Jesus in the New Testament, don't we? But the Bible is full of grace, God's grace. Even in the Old Testament, we find God's grace. For example, our passage this morning from Isaiah is full of amazing grace. Let's consider Isaiah for a minute. First, consider the time when this took place. God sent this vision to Isaiah in the year of King Uzziah. King Uzziah died. Uzziah had been king for over 40 years. His was a reign on Mark by Pathetic prophecy. Because of his strength, the land was at peace. Amazing grace. And what would happen now that King Uzziah died? Judea was open for attack until the new king demonstrated his ability to lead someone might topple the kingdom. You all know what I'm talking about. You know when a new pastor comes in, it takes some time for you to get your shenanigans going. Amen? Because you got to see what they're all about. So when the new king came in, it took some time for folks to get used to how he was going to run the kingdom. The people Isaiah included were probably very apprehensive and would they, would they have enjoyed to be ruined by an irresponsible administrator? Would they be plunged into chaos because of a weak government, they wondered. In an act of grace, God appeared to Isaiah. God's glorious presence, I am sure, was so reassurance. Their earthly king had died, but here was proof that their heavenly king, Lord, I could shout, was still alive. And what a king he was, powerful, and he was wise, attended by serpents and chirping, sitting high, holy, and in control. Who cares in a few people? Who cares if they had forgotten that fact? God could have quit easy just and gone away. But God didn't leave them alone. When they needed him most, God appeared and comforted Isaiah. And after all that Isaiah done to deserve comforting, did he? A pastoral call from an almighty God in the flesh. But God did just that. God showed up and he showed off. God personally appeared to Isaiah to comfort him. That visit didn't benefit God. It benefited Isaiah. Is it amazing, isn't it? It's amazing that God will come to someone like that. But God does it all the time. Because when you and I need him most, somebody finish it, he shows up and he shows off. That's what God did in Christ. 
uh, the people were afraid and had forgotten that God had promised to protect them. They had forgotten that God said, I will not leave you or forsake you. So in Christ, God came to them in the flesh and show them that the heavenly father would suffer their punishment for them. Amazing grace that God is all God's holiness would come to us and bring us comfort and care. In the midst of Isaiah person to God's vision comes another act of grace. As Isaiah looked on at the vision of glory, suddenly he realized who he is. He is a sinful man. Come on, somebody. He had forgotten God's steadfast love. He had abandoned trust in, in God's promise to protect the people. He had spoken words of doubt and despair that God provide how unfaithful he had been. He was a man of unclean lips, among a people of unclean lips. What would God do to him? Had God the Almighty come to destroy him for his lack of faith? Would the Almighty punish him for his lack of faith? It certainly was deserved. But the amazing grace of God never quit. God knew his heart. It wasn't about how you act sometime, but your heart has got to be right so that when you need to get it together, you can get it together. But if you don't have a relationship with God, if you don't know who he is, then it's hard to get it together then it's hard to call on the name of God. It's hard to say, Lord, I need you. So we've got to get it together. We've got to face our fears. <laughs> we've got to face those dark areas in our life. And we can't hold on to them, but we've got to give it to a living God with amazing grace who's able to keep us from harm and danger. I, I know right now we're going through all kinds of stuff in our country, going through all kinds of sadness, all kinds of stuff. And this is Black History Month, and some states are saying don't teach that in, in, class, in schools anymore because folks don't need to know about their history. But this is Black History Month. And when I was a young girl <laughs> in high school, I was the president of Carter G. Woodson Club. Just in case you wondered, Carter G. Woodson was the founder of Black History Week. That became a month. And now, every day of my life is black history. Amen? Wherever you from, every day of your life is your culture. And I want to learn about your culture, and I want you to learn about my culture. But what I want to share with you this morning is a little bit that I shared with you before that you already know about the hymn Amazing Grace that was written by John Newton. We were told that John Newton was a slave ship captain. Y'all know what that is. That means he took slaves from Africa to America, and he would pack them, as my mother told me, like sardines in the ship. And when they die, if you don't want your kids to hear it, cover their ears. When they died, they would just push them overboard in the ocean. My heart gets upset and my, my spirit, it bothers my spirit. But one day, this amazing God who, who I serve came to John Newton and he said, you're a man that needs to be forgiven. And he forgave him for all the wrong he did. And John Newton sat down and penned to paper 
amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. And if this amazing God can save John Newton, this amazing God can save you and me. Amen. He can save us. Folks wonder what's going on at First Church. There is an amazing God that shows up and shows out. There's an amazing God that comes and whispers sweet nothing in our ears. There's an amazing God that said there's work to be done. You can't sit still and you can't wonder what you can do. But First Church, you and I know about an amazing God that sees us just as we are. And when it sings, Pastor, I feel my heart this morning. When it sings, as the ship is about to sink, God comes along. Ah, and he wraps his arms around us. He said it's time for us to get up and get something done. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that save a wretch like me. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do for Jesus? What are you gonna do for the Holy Spirit? What are you going to do for a God that knows us by name? A God that calls us from on high. A God that says, are you ready? Huh? Who's willing to say, here I am, Lord? Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Hey, we don't have no money. We have no possession. Naked we came into the world. Naked we returned. But who is ready to say, I am ready, Lord. Send me. Because I know if you send me, Lord, I know if I say I'm ready, you will deliver me from my enemies. Somebody ought to say, Lord, I love you this day. Lord, I praise you this day. It ain't about anybody else, it's all about you. And over the years, over the years, Sitting in church as a child. Pastor Stewart, Reverend Hamilton, I remember when I was a little girl, the old Delaware Conference. Huh? Before we became Peninsula, De before they became Peninsula Delaware. The old Delaware Conference that had all of the black churches, and I remember as a little girl, we used to have annual conference at Tinley Temple. Anybody, anybody with me? Conference at Tinley Temple. I was a little girl in my little socks and my black patent leather shoes sitting in the balcony at Tinley Temple while the pastors weren't afraid to preach, would preach the word of God. Oh, we were so proud. Mount Zion will say, kids, when you get there, you open your mouth and sing. Miss Burgess used to tell us, you're not singing for your mother or your father or yourself, but you're singing for God. Amazing grace, we would sing. And I remember the choir used to sing a song that says, amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. Anybody with me? But now I'm found. Was blind. But now. But now. But now. I see. But then, Pastor, I remember.
Man, don't get, don't get, please don't take this as an insult. Please. I'm just going by memory. I remember when the men's choir used to be packed out. Ah, I mean, and they would start singing, Amazing Grace. Come on. Oh, uh, um, amazing grace that always be my song of faith. For it is grace that brought my liberty. I'll never know why Jesus came to love me so. He looked beyond my faults and saw my needs. I shall forever leave my eyes to Calvary to view the cross where Jesus died for me. History Month for me. Hallelujah. That's my tradition. Amen. Amazing grace. God is able to look beyond my faults. <laughs> He's able to look beyond your faults and see your need. I am a woman of unclean lips. I am a woman of unclean lips but that coal has touched that fire that fire has touched my lips and has washed away all of my stains you got any stains this morning the altar's open you know someone that needs prayer the altar's open there's a lot of hurting kids. There's a lot of hurting folks. We can pray for them. We can heal what we didn't think we could. I like to give this little bit of statistics out while you're coming because I want to know what you're, you to know what you're big enough and bold enough to do. As you come for prayer, last year, last year, 2021, you served over 30,000 people. Y'all didn't hear me. Do y'all know what I mean? I didn't say you served 3,000. 30. You were able to serve people within the city of Hyattsville and outside of Hyattsville. You're able to serve people in foreign country. You can do even greater things. Greater. Praise God. I always tease the, the group, <laughs> collaboration group, when we're getting ready to be dismissed. 
I always say to them, don't forget who we are. We are First Church, not by accident, but by God's design. By God's design. Who should I send? Did somebody say, send me? Who should I send? Send me, Lord. Don't wait on someone else. You can go. Hallelujah. And gracious God, as we looked over the congregation, <laughs> as your people begin to get back into the church, you are amazing. As your people bow before you this morning, whether we're at the altar or we're sitting in our pew, and we're saying to you, here I am, Lord, send me. As we call on your holy name this day, O oh God, will you revive us anew with power from on high? Will you, will you touch us like you've never touched us before? Will you change hearts and change minds? There's a lot of folks hurting this morning, O oh God. There's a lot of our kids that are hurting this morning and we're right next to them and we don't even know. But you, the great physician, you know everything. You know all our hearts, you know our thoughts, you know our minds, you, you know our works, oh God. Will you allow us to see you in brand new ways? Will you open up the skies and the heavens and Oh, God, surround us with your graciousness and your love so that we can love like we've never loved before. We can love amazingly and fearfully, oh, God, holding nothing back. Oh, God, you are everything to us. As you're passing out blessings this morning, Will you touch those at the altar? God, you know their hearts, you know their needs. Will you bless them, oh God? I know they know you're with them. But God, they need to feel you in person. And so we're thanking you in advance. We're blessing you. We're giving you praise and glory. In the name of our living God that is able to keep us from falling. In your holy name, we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. Amen.
as we prepare for the sacrament of Holy Communion. We're going to ask the ushers if they would <coughs> distribute the elements. Do they have it? As we, as we go forth in the sacrament, we're going to ask the ushers to pass out the elements. And hopefully next first Sunday we will pass them out as the people come in so that we won't have to wait. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right and good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join there an end in hymn saying, holy, 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 Lord. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. For this is my blood of a new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty act in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ suffering for us. We proclaim the mystery of faith. <laughs> Oh, 
Pour out your Holy Spirit on us now gathered here. And on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now in the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer that he taught his disciples to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, when he had given thanks, he took the bread and he gave it to his disciples. Take the bread and as you feed on it, may it sanctify your soul that you might have life everlasting. Take the bread and eat it together. Body of our Lord in Christ, shed for you. Take and eat it together. Eat it in your heart of thanksgiving that it might preserve your soul and your body and the life everlasting. Take and eat it together. Body of our Lord in And likewise, after supper, when he had given thanks, he took the cup. And he said, this is my blood which is given for you. Take and drink it together. Remembering that Christ died for your sins. And your sins. God, we give you thanks for this holy memorial of your, your life, that it might preserve us, that we might be able to go out into the world, that we would be ambassadors for you and for your life, that your amazing grace might go with us as we meet and be with each other. In Jesus' name, amen.
Let us be seated now as we receive the benediction. Gracious and eternal God, we give you thanks once again for your presence in our lives. And now, Lord, we ask that you would lead us, guide us, and direct us as we go about our several paths. Be with us, O oh God, and direct us until that day, O oh God, when you would present us all faultless before your throne of grace with great joy, that your love and your wisdom would go with us now, henceforth, and forevermore, that we might be your servants and continually experience your amazing grace, knowing that you'll go with us and stand by us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us remain seated through the postlude. Amen.